Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome to the Stata course on regression analysis and estimation methods. We have learned basic Stata commands for the OLS regressions and some commonly used estimation approaches. Today, we will look at some options for the OLS regression we haven't discussed in previous topics such as the variance-covariance option for the standard errors and the standardized coefficient option. We will also graph the estimated coefficient plots. We can plot the coefficients from different models in a diagram. It gives us a straightforward comparison of the estimates. Let's use our course dataset bob3.dta. When we describe the dataset, we find data on the US workers, age, the log of hourly wage, years of schooling completed, marital status, gender, self-reported health categories, and race. The data were collected at a point in time in 2017. Each observation is for one worker. There were 4,183 observations. That is, there were 4,183 workers in our dataset. Each worker has seven variables, age, log wage, schooling, married, race, house, and female. Notice that the ordering of the data does not matter for econometric analysis. For example, swapping the positions of the first two observations will not affect the OLS regression results. The data in this structure is called the cross-sectional data. It is the most common data structure widely used in economics and other social sciences. All the OLS regression commands and estimation methods we have learned in previous topics can be applied to cross-sectional data. We will add some new content today. We use the regress command to perform Ordinary Least Squares OLS Linear Regression. There are some useful options for the regress command. The option VCE specifies the type of standard error. The option's name stands for the Variance Covariance Estimator. The default is the standard variance. We can use the robust variance covariance option in the presence of heteroscedasticity of unknown form. When the variance of the error term is not constant or depends on explanatory variables, we say the error term exhibits heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity will not cause the estimates to be biased or inconsistent. However, it will make the T statistics and F statistics no longer valid because the variance of the estimator is not correctly calculated. Therefore, the statistical inference and hypothesis testing are not valid in the presence of heteroscedasticity. Stata provides the VCE robust option so that we can obtain the heteroscedasticity robust standard errors for the OLS estimates. We type the regress command followed by the outcome variable, log wage, and a list of explanatory variables. We use the double hash tags to include the level and squared term of age. Remember to use the c dot prefix for continuous variables and the i dot 
prefix for categorical variables. We can also change the base group for categorical variables. For example, we specify the poor health group as the base group. We add the option VCE robust after the comma. Stata computes the heteroscedasticity robust standard errors instead of the usual ones. After storing estimates for each model, we can compare the estimates using these two types of standard errors in a table with the stab command. The estimates are identical no matter which standard errors we use, the usual or robust ones. In our case, the heteroscedasticity robust standard errors are close to the usual standard errors for most estimates, and the significance levels do not change as a result. Next, I want to introduce another option for the regress command. It is the beta option. Stata will provide the standardized coefficient estimates in addition to the usual estimates. The standardized beta coefficient estimates come from the regression with standardized variables. A variable is standardized by subtracting its mean and dividing by its standard deviation. We obtain standardized coefficients when we use all standardized variables in the model. We don't need to do it manually. We just need to add the beta option of the regress command. The standardized coefficients are interpreted as follows. If the explanatory variable increases by one standard deviation, the outcome variable changes by beta standard deviations. In other words, we are measuring effects not in terms of the original units of the variables, but in standard deviation. When comparing the importance of explanatory variables to the outcome variable, the standardized coefficients are more helpful than the usual coefficients. In our example, we find that a one standard deviation increase in years of schooling raises the workers' log wages by 0 0.38 standard deviation. Next, let me show you how to plot the estimates in the diagram. We can use the margins and margins plot commands to do that. We first estimate a linear regression model. Then we type margins, comma, and the option dydx. We put a star inside the parentheses to represent all the variables. The option dydx means the average marginal effects of the explanatory variables on the outcome variable. In a linear regression model like this one, the average marginal effects are identical to the coefficient estimates. Then we use the margins plot command to plot the marginal effects. The recast option specifies the plot style. We use the scatter style here. We also add a horizontal line at y equals zero. We have the estimates plots with 95% confidence intervals. The graph shows the estimates as points and the confidence intervals as bars. Any bars across the zero horizontal line imply the estimates are insignificant at the 5% level because the 95% confidence interval includes zero. We can choose the coefficients to be plotted when we use the dydx option. Another command is coit plot. 
It is a user written package. We can install it using the ssc install command followed by the command's name, coitplot. It installs the program from the Boston College Statistical Software Components SSC archive. We type coitplot and add a vertical line at x equals 0. It gives a graph for the estimates. We can choose which coefficients to be plotted with the keep option. After we store the estimation results from different models, we can compare them in a diagram with the COVID plot command. We may want to know whether educational attainment plays the same role in wages for male and female workers. We can run two separate regression models and then compare the effects on the same graph. We store the results with the female and male names. Then we type COVID plot followed by the two models' names. And here we are. The return to education is higher for female than male workers. But their 95% confidence intervals overlap compared to white workers, black men unsignificantly less than black women. We can use two parentheses and put each model in one. The markers, symbol, and color options are the same as we use the graph two-way command. Thank you for watching this video. See you soon in the next topic. Take care. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.